On March 13, 2018, President Trump arrived to San Diego to tour the border wall prototypes. This administration made it clear that national security, which starts with a secure border, is on top of their agenda list. But this wall is just a physical barrier. The more interesting question is what happens to the searches at the border? What does the Constitution say about the searches conducted at the border? The Constitution has an invisible wall built into it. It's called the Fourth Amendment. The Fourth Amendment states the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrant shall be issued but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. One of the key words here is reasonable. Some searches are deemed reasonable by the Constitution and thus do not require a warrant of probable cause. Over the years, the law and the case law has established different tests for what is reasonable. For example, an officer needs reasonable suspicion to stop a vehicle and probable cause to search it. But the border is completely different. In 1985, the Supreme Court stated in Montoya de Hernandez, routine searches of the persons and effects are not subject of any requirement of probable cause, reasonable suspicion, or a warrant at the border. The case set a precedent for the searches are so routine that they're reasonable under the Fourth Amendment. Examples of non-routine searches include strip, body cavity, and involuntary x-ray searches. These types of searches require a heightened level of suspicion because they're deemed highly intrusive. Then, of course, came a case of a vehicle. How intrusive can a search of a vehicle be at the border? Manuel Flores Montano was driving his 1987 Ford Taurus station wagon through the Ote Mesa port of entry here just south of San Diego. A customs inspector requested Mr. Flores to proceed to the secondary search. There, a second inspector tapped on the gas tank, which sounded a little solid to him. It, it seemed like something was there. The inspector called a mechanic who arrived about half an hour later. This mechanic removed about 37 kilograms of marijuana from the gas tank. The process of taking off the gas tank took about 25 minutes. Interestingly, the government doesn't argue here that they have reasonable suspicion or probable cause to search Mr. Flores or his gas tank. And in fact, they could have. Uh, instead, they're trying to set a precedent with this case. Uh, the government argues that the, all of the Fourth Amendment protections should be waived at the border, simply because it's a border. The court states, complex balancing tests in determining what is routine search of a vehicle as opposed to more intrusive search of a person has no place at the border uh, for the search of the vehicle. Additionally, the government's interest in preventing the entry of unwanted persons and effects into the country is at its zenith at international border. Time and again, we have stated that searches made at the border pursuant to a long-standing right of a sovereign to protect itself by stopping and examining persons and property crossing into this country are reasonable simply by the virtue of the fact that they occur at the border. Mr. Flores Montana makes two arguments. First, he urges the court that he has privacy interests in his fuel tank, and the disassembly of the fuel tank is an invasion of that privacy. The court disagrees. Travelers are stopped at the border every day and their belongings searched. Also, the court has, doesn't see a difference between taking the gas tank apart and searching vehicles passenger compartment. Second, he argues that disassembly of a gas tank is a significant deprivation of property interests that are also protected by the Fourth Amendment because it may damage the vehicle. Again, the court says, no, disassembly is not that it's insignificant, but the government is still justified. And if something gets broken, he can always sue for damages. Most people will not be caught at the border with drugs. Their gas tank is probably gonna have just fuel in it. It's hard to imagine yourself in Mr. Flores' position, but border exception to the Fourth Amendment affects everyone, not just foreigners who come through the border, but citizens as well. Citizens cross this border every day. And by the way, the border includes all ports of entries and all international terminals at the airports. It even includes some lands that are within the country, which is hard to really grasp. But on the drive from San Diego to Orange County, you're gonna go through a checkpoint in San Clemente. Uh, that checkpoint is an immigration checkpoint. Uh, so all the border exceptions uh, still apply to that checkpoint. You're going to look around and you're going to ask yourself, where's the border? Uh, and of course, I'll talk about that topic some other time. 
at the end of the day, the courts must balance liberties of citizens against government's interests. I think most people will agree that the search of a vehicle for drugs and weapons at the border is probably allowed, but the government should really keep its hands off people's privates. What I mean here is cavity searches. The difficult questions becomes what happens to the cell phones, laptops, and iPads? Are these devices more like a car? So there's really no protections at the border? Is the government free to unlock and look at the information on your phone? Or is it more intrusive and requires some level of suspicion by the Border Patrol? Cell phones contain vast quantities of information, private information. Your smartphones include messages, call logs, but it might also have medical records on it, bank records, all the apps that you've downloaded from iTunes, those contain your information. Uh, to me, a search of a phone bears little resemblance to a search of a gas tank. The wall will perhaps be the new addition to the southern border, but the invisible legal wall created by the Fourth Amendment existed well before Trump's presidency. Some things have changed last year, though. In 2017, Customs and Border Protection conducted over 30,000 searches of electronic devices compared to only 19,000 the year prior. And we know where the law enforcement will likely stand when it comes to cell phone searches at the border. Deputy Executive Assistant Commissioner uh, John Wagner says, in the digital age, border searches of electronic devices are essential to enforcing the laws of the United States border and to protect the American people. The Supreme Court, however, is yet to speak on the level of suspicion the government needs to conduct these searches at the border. I'd love to hear your comments and your thoughts on the topic. Should the government be able to search your phones at the border or the international airport terminals? And if, if they are allowed, how much suspicion should they have before they do? Comment below and of course subscribe to my channel. If you have a case in California, Nevada or Utah, give us a call at 619-357-6677 and visit our website at lostash.com.